racial profiling and abuse of blacks by the police. November 2014, Ferguson, Missouri. The Department of Justice cleared the officer of any wrongdoing but accused the police department of racial bias. The statistic that was most mentioned was that 60% of the population in Ferguson were black. But blacks represented 85% of the people stopped for traffic violations. This is actually a pattern that you see in other cities. In New York, for example, the population black is only 25%, but they represent 55% of the people stopped for traffic violations. Evidence of racism, you say? I think not. To understand this, we need to take a look at crime rates. Blacks represent only 13% of the population in the U.S., but they commit 50% of the nation's homicides. And most of the victims of those homicides are actually black, right? In 2012, uh, the police killed 123 blacks, and that same year, blacks killed 6,000 people. Most of them, again, black. What about traffic stops? The National Institute of Justice said in 2013 that three out of four black drivers admitted that they were stopped for a legitimate reason. The Highwood Administration also find that blacks commit more offenses than white people on every category. This is not systemic racism, it's just reality. Prejudices and racial profiling, we use that all the time, right? I am from Bolivia and I tell you, I get scrutinized when I go through the airport a lot more than a Canadian citizen. It's just what it is because, you know, statistically speaking, there are a lot of drug dealers coming from Bolivia a lot more than from Canada, right? So I get scrutinized a lot more. Should I be offended about that? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely not. What the police <laughs> What the police is trying to do, what the police is trying to do is use a statistical measure. You know, from a statistical perspective, more drug dealers come from Bolivia than from Canada. I have to be more careful. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Prejudice and bias have a purpose. Uh, if you are walking in the forest and you see a bear, don't you run away from the bear? You do, because your prejudice is that bears kill people in the forest. And it would be dangerous to get closer to it. You are using the statistical evidence, you are using the information that you have, your prior. Now this prior, you know, we use patient learning, if you've taken it here to Dr. Reagan. We use patient learning and these priors get updated. Uh, but all you're using is your statistical evidence. So, when a police officer stops a black person, is more careful, or scrutinizes a, a little bit more, he's using uh, the statistical evidence. What uh, you need to do, right, and everybody needs to do is say, yes sir, yes sir, put your hand here, put your other hand on the wheel, and just cooperate with the police. Uh, and, and, you know, you, they are using just their, their priors. So, uh, first of all, I absolutely not believe that it is okay for people uh, to suffer injustices because of the color of their skin. Uh, I, th I think we're clear, everybody, of that. What I'm saying here is that that is not due to systemic racism. Okay? So uh, the data that I pointed out uh, was that when you take a look at crime rates, right, the black population is only 25% of the country and yet, they commit 50% of the crimes. So, uh, when, a police is, when a police stops a, a black person for a traffic offense, which the Department of Justice also says that blacks commit more uh, traffic offenses than, than whites, then that statistic becomes a prior for the police officer. Uh, we need to be very extremely careful here, because priors are helpful, as I said with my, with, in my example of, of the bear in the forest. But we need to be, uh, we need to understand that those priors are updated, you know, uh, throughout history. And so things get better and better for, for, for blacks. And again, the, the, the thing that has done the most uh, for uh, in minorities is freedom. Without it, uh, you know, wouldn't be able to escape out of poverty. Let me give you just one more statistic and I'm going to give it to, to Dr. Bass to, to be fair. Uh, the, sorry. In, the 18, in, in 1890 and early 1900s, a black kid was slightly, believe it or not, slightly more likely to grow up in a nuclear intact family than a white kid. <laughs> That's 1890-1900, check your sources. Okay? By 19... Yeah. 
Oh, hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you talk. Let me. Let me talk. Okay. A kid growing up without a dad. Why do I bring this up? Because a kid growing up without a dad is five times more likely to be poor and commit crime, nine times more likely to drop off of school, and twenty times more likely to end up in jail. So the problem, and, and you ask why the black population are, is poorer than the white population, the big culprit here is the disintegration of the family. So taking a look at the facts, taking a look at the statistics will help you understand that there is no systemic racism. That is not to say that racism is okay. I hope I made myself clear.